On the one hand, it seems completely absurd to me that we are sending hundreds of millions of pounds worth of aid plus hundreds of millions of pounds worth of military aid to this camp while simultaneously, I say we as the West, by the way, I don't mean the UK, simultaneously spending an absolute fortune with Russia on oil and gas. And that, we go around in circles about this, talking about this all the time. We don't seem to be any closer to a resolution on that basic point, do we? Not really. Um, the EU, some of the EU states are moving a bit closer towards oil sanctions. So Germany has said it might be possible to bring forward an oil embargo. But there are other EU member states that get a lot of their oil from Russia. So Hungary gets 58% of its oil from Russia, Slovakia 96%. And their pipelines are very much tied to Russia. So it's, it's very difficult for them to sim simply reorient to global markets and buy the oil from elsewhere. And as for gas, Russia supplies about 45% of the EU's gas. And again, that is something where you're very much hardwired into a particular supply because of gas pipelines. It's much, it's much more difficult to simply retool and say, OK, we'll import liquid natural gas from overseas. You have to build new infrastructure, new ports, for example, to import that. It's much more expensive. So you're looking at a process of years to wean yourself away from Russian gas. It simply cannot be done overnight. And by which time, by the way, the conflict, hopefully, I say, would be over. And when you're saying wean yourself off and go to other places, the talk of places like Saudi Arabia being people's primary suppliers in cases. And I mean, they don't exactly have a glowing human rights record themselves, do they? So, you know, where, is there anyone in this day and age that's actually crystal clean that you can trade with, with a good conscience? Not really. Um, the United States also would like to supply liquid natural gas to Europe. It's much better for the United States to have Western Europe depend on the United States than it is to depend on Russia. And that arguably is one of the United States' strategic objectives in all of this, is to regain US primacy in Western Europe, which is doing quite well at the moment. Dominique, itching to get in, I see. <laughs> I mean, I think for the US it could all also be um, one of its strategic errors, because although there is a place for the US um, in supplying more energy, it quite simply doesn't have the supply at the moment. So it's failing on that point. And secondly, when it comes to the issue of weaning ourselves off Russian energy, some European states are actually trying to circumvent the sanctions in really quite a funny way by um, paying into a bank that the energy company Gazprom uses, um, using dollars and euros, and, and that currency actually being transferred into rubles. Yeah, as which, part of their settlement process. Which conveniently, um, you know, aligns with the sanctions. And all in all, I think that this really does reveal that the basic point of this conflict and our European partners' participation in it is to seek some sort of resolution. And funnily enough for me, I don't think that that has been actually at the forefront um, of the agenda, especially when it comes to Boris Johnson as well. He's played a pivotal role. I don't think anyone can argue with that. But surely we should be pushing for some sort of resolution. It doesn't matter how brutal, and Russia has been brutal in Ukraine, that is the way war works, essentially. You should be pushing for some sort of resolution, but we don't seem to be any closer to one. 